I'm here with the 25th Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Kathleen Wynne, celebrating Norus, the joyous event celebrated all over the world. Premier Wynne, thank you very much for the interview. Pleasure to be here. Thanks, David. As you know, Norus is celebrated internationally. It's a truly diverse and inclusive sort of holiday. And diversity and inclusion has been a, a primary value of your government. Yes. You most recently announced the establishment of the Anti-Racism Directorate. Can you tell us why now and, and, uh, and what led to this decision? Well, first of all, um, I am, I'm just thrilled to be able to once again celebrate Nowruz with, uh, with the Persian community. Um, I don't think I've ever seen uh, as beautiful displays as some of the half seen that I've seen in, uh, in uh, celebrations. It's just a, a, a wonderful celebration of spring. And we always joke because it comes very close to St. Patrick's Day. So we celebrate the two at the same time, my heritage, my Irish heritage. It's very important to me that we recognize that our diversity in Ontario and in Canada is actually the strength of who we are. You know, as you've heard me say before, David, um, except for our Indigenous people, except for Aboriginal people, we all came from somewhere else. And we came to this country, to this province, to build a society that, that is inclusive, that, that values difference, and at the same time creates uh, a united country out of that. So, um, so it's very important to me that where we, where we can do better, we find a way to do that. And um, there used to be an anti-racism uh, secretariat within, within government, so secretariat, directorate. It was a secretariat at that point. We're making it a, a directorate. But um, it, it got cancelled and really shut down during the Harris years, so in the Conservative years before our government. And um, for some years, we developed an equity policy in, uh, in education, for example, and we've done various things across government to recognize diversity. But it seems to me that recently, because of some issues like carding, for example, because of the debate that came up during the, uh, the federal election, which really was um, a, a sort of recent example of Islamophobia particularly, um, I think that there's a need, once again, for us to be able to do public awareness, to make sure that we take a, a, a lens, a racism lens, and apply it across government, that as we bring policies forward, we look at how they will have an impact on, uh, on various communities, and that we recognize that there are places where certain racialized groups are not succeeding as well as they should, uh, and that we find ways of, uh, of addressing that. So unfortunately, in 2016, I think it's time again that we be very explicit about our uh, our challenges and not assume that because it's 2016 that somehow because we are this beautiful diverse place that we have all dealt with uh, the issues of racism in all of our workplaces and in all of our schools and in all, all of our uh, our communities so that's why that's why we're going to establish an anti-racism direct directorate that's wonderful so what kind of outcomes would you hope to see with the with the directorate well i would i would like to see a more intelligent debate uh, about the challenges that we face as a society. I'd like, you know, I'd like us to move away some of the ge from some of the generalizations that we use. I'd like to see certain groups of young people. I mean, it's always been a, a concern of mine that, for example, in our schools, um, Aboriginal kids and uh, African Canadian kids don't do as well as uh, as other uh, as other students in our school. And I think that that that's a great shame. I would like to see, for example. I'd like to see um, people understand better what world religions are and how do, we, how do we separate religion from culture and then separate all of that from a discussion of an individual's behavior. So those are the kinds of things that I'm going to be looking to the anti-racism directorate for, for advice on. And uh, I, know that it, I know that the people who are part of that directorate will engage with communities across the province to, uh, to get advice from the community because that's how we'll make good policy decisions. Wonderful. So continuing on the, the theme of diversity, we know that Ontario's success is in large part because of our immigrant populations. And we've got quite a few diaspora communities, the Persian one of course being a, a significant one as well and now actually constituting about the fourth largest source of immigrants to Canada. What does your government plan to do to leverage these communities to increase jobs, the economy, uh, trade opportunities? 
Well, th this is something that we have been working on for some time, so that um, you might remember when we first came into office when, uh, under the previous Premier, we, uh, we struggled with this whole issue of credentialing. So people come from other countries, they have, um, they have credentials, they have education, they have um, uh, designations that aren't necessarily recognized here. And so we put in place a Fairness Commissioner and we, uh, we gave the Fairness Commissioner the role of of the responsibility of looking at different colleges, different um, professional bodies, and making sure that they worked to remove barriers for people who were qualified to do certain kinds of work. And so, um, so we've got that in place, but we've also put new programs in place, like bridge training programs, um, like uh, job shadowing programs, that allow people to um, become part of the culture, because it is about skills. It's about the skills and it's about the education, but it's also about being able to function in the culture and having the right uh, networks and being able to access those. So, so it, there's a programmatic approach and there's been, a, there's been a sort of regulatory approach to make sure that, for example, the professional engineers are not putting in place um, barriers to engineers from other countries or the College of Physicians and Surgeons. And there's still work to do on that front, but the, some of those processes have become more streamlined, and that's, that's a good thing for foreign trained professionals. We've got a new federal government in Ottawa, which has been very, um, very clear that it wants to take a different approach with Iran vis-a-vis -vis di uh, diplomacy and, and, and engagement. Do you foresee any opportunities uh, if and when those, uh, those channels are open and, and, and uh, the federal government takes those positions, do you see any opportunity for economic opportunity trade uh, with Iran at some point? So we will, we will follow the lead of the, uh, the federal government. You will know that I worked very hard to get Justin Trudeau elected, and I'm very happy that he is there. I have a lot of faith in his, him and in his cabinet <clears throat> and his government. So I will, I will follow their lead. But just to actually merge your last question and this question, I believe that our diversity is our strength here. It makes us a, it makes us a rich and interesting and very uh, strong culture here in Ontario. But I also think that our diversity has a very practical application, and that is we have contacts with people all over the world. So the Persian community is a very well-connected community, as you well know, all over the world with highly educated people, um, people who are strong and successful business people. And so that is one of the ways that our economy, our economy can grow stronger is by exploring export opportunities, by connecting with, those, uh, with the diaspora in other parts of the world, and as, as far as the connection with Iran, I think that, that needs to be something that is a national conversation, and I will uh, certainly work with the federal government in, uh, along their path. Great. Um, <coughs> let's talk a little bit about students. Um, as you know, students are graduating uh, today with the greatest amounts of debts, possibly not the best sort of job prospects in this economy. Your government recently announced uh, free tuition for students who come from households, I believe is under 50,000 a year. So, so what we've done is, um, David, there were a whole range of programs, including tax credits, that uh, have been in place. And um, what, through our program review process, because we're looking right across government and we're looking at what's working, what's not working. Obviously, the objective of student assistance is to get all qualified kids, young people, and people maybe who have been out of school for a while, to get into post-secondary education, to get the degree that they degree or diploma that they uh, they want, and then to be able to take part in the economy. Our strength in Ontario is our educated workforce. You know, we're a huge geography with a small population, so we need everybody at their best. So we looked across uh, all of the programs that we had in place, and what we realized was some of the programs like the tax credits for example that were being applied were actually benefiting the wealthiest people in the in the society and you know there's nothing wrong with that except that there were still young people from uh, families of low and modest income who weren't accessing so those low and middle income people who might look at the cost of a, a university or college program and say you know we can't afford that for our child and then the child the student misses that opportunity so we've bundled all the um, programs together we've actually cancelled uh, the tax credits because as I say they weren't 
producing the outcome that we were looking for. And we were creating what's called the Ontario Student Grant, so the OSG. And what that will mean is where we had tax credits and we had 30% off tuition sort of evenly applied across a, a broad swath of, swath of the population, what we've done is we've targeted um, the group of students who live in families who earn um, $50,000 or less. And what we've said is that for those students who are going into um, a regular university or college program, in the case of university, 70% of those students will have absolutely free tuition and will actually get more than their tuition costs, average tuition costs, and 90% of college students will have free tuition. And um, the other 30% the other and 10%, they will get most of their tuition covered, uh, but for various reasons, because of um, other supports they have, it wouldn't be 100%. But largely, what it means is that students in those low and middle income families will have either free tuition or virtually free tuition. Between 50,000 and 83,000, um, those students, many of those students will continue to, uh, they will also have uh, free tuition or virtually free tuition, um, that middle income uh, bracket. And then up to 160,000, uh, those students will have at least the 30% tui off tuition that they have now. So nobody will be worse off and, you know, many hundreds of thousands of students will be better off than they were before. And this is, this is an important thing to do because we are now missing students who are perfectly qualified intellectually and academically to be in college and university, but they're not going because they look at the sticker price and they, they don't go. And so that's why we're changing the way we do student assistance. And so that means that those students, many of those students will have no debt when they, uh, when they graduate, at least no provincial debt, because there still are some national, there's some, some federal grants that uh, they will get, some Canada student grants that they will get, or student loans. But in terms of provincial, there will be none of that, uh, none of that debt that they'll carry. Wonderful. Premier Wynne, it's been an honor. Thank you very much. Happy Thank Norris you. to you. Thank you, Nooruz Mubarak. Thank you. Thank you very much.